All right, hello. I'll be showing you how to use Dino Core. Uh, Dino Core is a crate uh, for Rust that you can use to isolate and run JavaScript. Uh, it's from Dino, and Dino is a JavaScript and TypeScript uh, runtime, it's similar to Node.js. And uh, Dino Core is built off of V8, which I made a video on a few days ago. Uh, you can use V8 to run Untrust or, or just JavaScript that you want to run in your application. And uh, it, I think that Dino Core is easier to use than Rusty V8. And it has uh, some additional things that you can use that's somewhat useful. Uh, to get into it, just create a new crate. So cargo new, and I'll just name this, uh, whoops, Dino Learn. And then open your IDE. Next, open cargo.toml, and we need to pull in our dependencies, and that's uh, Rusty V8 and Dino Core. I'll leave a crates.io links in the description for this. And um, then after that, go to main.rs. Now let's use the dependencies. So use Rusty V8 as V8, and then use uh, Dino Core, and we'll want to use JS Runtime. JS Runtime is the Thing that creates the isolate and runs the JavaScript. And even though Dino is a TypeScript and JavaScript runtime, Dino Core can only run JavaScript. So let's go ahead and create the JS runtime. Let mute uh, runtime is equal to JS runtime and new. And we can pass in some options. You might just want to pass in the default options, but the thing about this is, let's say you're running untrusted code, it could use all the resources on your machine. So you might want to limit the amount of RAM it can use, right? And to do that, we need to pass in the runtime options. Now, if we go to docs.rs and look at JS runtime, you can see it takes uh, runtime options and it creates, and it takes a uh, create params. And this is the isolate, isolate create creation parameters and we want to create that. Let's define a let create params equal to v8 and then isolate and then create params and then heap limits, pass in the initial heap and then the maximum that you want. So in this case, I'll just do 32 megabytes. That looks good. And now we want to define the runtime options and then pass in the create params and it was sum create params and then the default options and that looks good now we can actually run some javascript let's create a file example.js and let's say in this file we have a result. So let's just say it's 5 times 20. And we actually want to print this result. To do that, we can use dino.core.ops and then do dino.core.print. And then we can print the result. And then we probably want to break line. And this is an integer, so let's do two string. Now this will print to the output. And if we look on Dino Core's GitHub, you can see that documentation for this crate is thin, but I believe in the bindings.rs, some of these functions you can see, like print, encode, decode, etc. And then also in core.js, you can see some of the other functions. And things like uh, uh, by name, maybe not. Yeah, dispatch by name. And this actually is the one that calls the Rust function. Uh, and I'll show you that later. But for right now, let's just run this. Well, first we need to actually uh, execute the file. So let's just call it example.js. And then we need to include the file. So include str. And then the path to the file, so example.js. And now that should work. 
and you can see it prints 100. Now let's say you want to call a Rust function. And this Rust function, even though we have dno.core.print, let's just make our own print function. And we'll want to call this print function in the JavaScript. To do that, let's just say the function is opprint. And then we need to let the JavaScript know about this function. To do that, we can do runtime dot register op and then the name of the function so op print and then the name of the rust function whoops and this can be this is what you call in the JavaScript and then this is your rust function and if we look at the documentation if you look at JS runtime and then register op you can see what is passed in We want RC and then ref cell and then the op state. And let's just assign this to state. Next, we want the buffs, and this is a buff vector. And then this returns op. And we're printing to the terminal, to the output. And so we're not actually returning anything, we're just printing. And we could just do op and then sync and then a new box. And then this box will just be empty. And then that's good. Now we actually want to print this buffer to the output. To do that, we can do for buff and buffs. And then we need to convert the vector or we need to convert the zero copy buffer into a u8 buffer and then we can take that and then convert it into a string let str is equal to string and then we can do u from utf8 lossy and then convert it so buff and then print the string like so now we need to actually call the function we can get rid of Dino you know, core print and define our own function. Function print, we want to take the content and then call our own function. To do that, we do Dino core and then dispatch uh, by name and then the name of the function, op print, and then the contents. And this takes a U8 array. To do that, so we need to encode our content. So dino.core.encode, and then content, and then we want to convert the string, and let's also break line. Now let's print the content, or print the result. Now, I might have done something wrong, but hopefully that runs. And you can see it prints 100. Now, a few other things. This takes a U8 array, right? Hypothetically, we could get rid of the print line and then define, let's just say this is a let uh, new line is equal to a new U int array. And then this just is 10 because 10 is the line break. You can look this up. Just look up ASCII line break and you can see U810 as a line break. And then we could just pass this in, new line. And then let's print result a few more times. And you can see it prints the with the line break because 10 is the line break for ASCII and U8. And then it gets decoded here. And another thing about this is we could just have a standard output and then an STD output and then actually get rid of these two lines and just make it a little bit more efficient. And to do that, we can do let mute out is equal to STD IO and then STD out. And then we could just write the buffer to the output. 
So out dot write all, and then buff, and then unwrap, and then we can get rid of this. And then let's run that. And you can see it's the same. That is, uh, oh, the last thing I'll show you is how to just run JavaScript directly. You can do runtime.execute. And then let's just say, this is source. And let's just say, let's define a variable of code. And then let's define this variable code is equal to um, something like uh, print, because this, our, we've already executed this, which is defined, which defines our function. So we can use print here too print five, and then let's run that. And then you can see that it prints five. This should be enough to get you going. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below.